Grab your Bibles. Go to, um, yeah, go to Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6. We're going to start there and allow God just to move and have his way. I want to I wanna encourage you this morning dealing with the issue of kingdom, and I want to read one verse, and then I'm going to back into it. And so this morning, I just want to talk and share with you prayerfully a word of encouragement as it relates to kingdom. Jump down to verse 12 of Romans chapter 6, and then I'll back into this and we'll talk briefly and allow God just to move. If you're there, say amen. amen. Look at verse 6. Verse 6 says this, do not let sin therefore reign in your mortal bodies to make you not obey its passion. Do not... Uh, to make you obey its passion, do not present your members to sin as instruments for unrighteousness, but present yourself to God as those who have been brought from death to life, and your members to God as instruments for righteousness. For sin will have no dominion over you, since you are not under law, but under grace. Do you mean here, here, turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, you can make it. Come on, turn to the other neighbor, say, other neighbor. You can make it. Turn to the person behind you and say, person behind me. Now, if everybody turn around, y'all ain't going to be looking at each other. Yeah, I think I messed that one up. Yeah, I missed. Yeah, I'll own that one. I'll own that one. Yeah, yeah. Don't turn around. Don't turn around. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that was not good. <laughs> yeah, well, just point yourself and say self. <laughs> so I can make it. Yeah, and then say one thing again. Say self. <laughs> you don't have to do it. All right, Troy, you can stop laughing now. Yeah, Troy just loves for me to make mistakes. You know, he just, <laughs> amen. Okay, listen, let me review real quick. Um, let me review real quick. I think tech team, we might be okay, so don't change nothing. We might be good, okay. So um, I want to review. We've been dealing with the issue of kingdom and developing a kingdom mindset. And so um, last week we spent some time in Romans chapter 12, uh, verses 1 and 2. And if you missed that, I want to encourage you to go podcast, you know, online, listen to that. Um, I think it'll it put today's message in context a little bit to give you a little bit of a framework. But the two things that we share with you is that as we're talking about developing a kingdom mindset, kingdom living requires that our bodies become living sacrifices for kingdom purposes, right? And so what that means is that I've got to make some sacrifice. I have to give up some things so I can be who God would have me to be so I can live in the kingdom. Very, very important that we not miss that. The second thing we saw by way of review is that living in God's kingdom is not based on secular molds, but it is based on God, God's established patterns. Let me tell you what that means. The world has a way that the world does what the world does. God has a way that God does what God does. Does this make sense? Come on. Are you with me? So hear me out. We can't bring God's, I mean, the world's methods and methodologies and the way it does things into the kingdom of God and function that way. Okay, when we have been, uh, oh gosh, some of you have missed the streets, but I'm bringing you up to speed as fast as I can. When you have been rescued and transferred, we've got to let go of some things and develop some new molds, some new methods, some new way of doing things. Does that make sense? Very, very important. And then the third thing I share with you is this. The result of a renewed mind is a revelation of life in the kingdom of God. Here, don't let me use, lose you yet. When my mind is changed, I now understand how to live life in the kingdom. In God's kingdom, it calls for a completely different way of living, a different way of, of just serving God, and a different way of being who God would have us to be. So um, when, we get, when we start the process of renewing our mind, we will notice that we start to understand more and more of what life is in the kingdom of God is. And personal testimony, um, and I'll try not to segue too much. I'm just excited about this. Uh, my wife and I did a quick turnaround this weekend um, to Phoenix. My brother graduated um, from Grand Canyon University with his master's, and we went down real quick to celebrate him. And I am enjoying the heck out of this woman. Yeah, I am. I am. Um, and let me tell you why, because I'm realizing that part of kingdom living is this. I don't have to wait for her to change nothing. I just got to do it. 
Seek kingdom, right? This, this is some of the, come on, y'all. This is some of the benefits of the kingdom, right? And I'm not waiting for y'all to change nothing. I just got to do it, right? And then you kind of get Jesus just modeled. Does that make sense? And he walked in kingdom. So as, as I change my mindset, I am understanding more and more what God would have me to do and to be. So this today, I want to talk about overcoming the power of sin. Now, the reason this today's message is important, and I'm hoping that it comes across as encouraging encouragement to you is that, let me, let me use my two things. Um, if I'm over here, I'm kind of in the worldly systems, and when I move over here, I am now in the kingdom of God. So y'all bear with me as you kind of walk through this, right? So the problem is, I've been over here for so long that this has shaped me. It's formed me. You kind of get what I'm saying? I developed some habits. I developed some things. When I'm here and you get on my nerve, I ain't got nothing to lay down. I just go off on you straight smooth. Come on, y'all. Cuss you up one side, down the other, round the back, all that good stuff, right? The problem is once I make the transfer because I've been rescued and I live here, I can't do that no more, right? But I've been doing it for so long that it's just natural for me to do it. Y'all don't just act like it's just me. Because I haven't heard some of y'all, all right? <laughs> yeah. Stuff just come out. Behaviors just come out, right? We just do things, and we wonder why we keep doing it. And so today, I want to begin the process of explaining um, what that's all about so we can um, get to the place where we can know what it is to live in kingdom. So look at that big idea. Here's what I want y'all to understand. Unifying with Christ provides freedom uh, from the tyranny of sin. So here's what that statement says, and I want you to get that in your spirit all day long as we talk about this. When I become one with Christ, when I identify with Christ, we just finished the identity series, and we're not losing sight of that. When I am in union with Christ, that's the whole theological statement that we'll talk about in a little while, I understand that I have been freed from the grips of sin, from the manipulative tactics tactics of sin. Sin doesn't have what it had on me when I was over here, right? So I want to talk about, explain that a little bit this morning so we can be encouraged and move to where God would have us to be. So there's uh, three things I want to share with you this morning, and we're going to read the text, but the first one I want you to understand is this thing that's on the screen. Number one, union with Christ results in death to sin and resurrection to to life, to a new life, okay? So number one, when I am united with Christ, sin is dead or I have died to sin and now my challenge is I need to learn how to live this new life. Does that make sense? Now, now, now this may sound elementary. I've been saved for a very, 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 very long time. I still have not mastered this, okay? And every time I read Romans chapter 6, it rekindles the flame and it gives me a gentle reminder, hey, Felix, you can make it, right? So I want you all to know this morning, you can make it, okay? So Romans chapter 6, let's read, and then I want you to keep this first thing in perspective as we talk through what we're going to talk through. So now, notice what it says in verses 1 through 4. What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? It says, by no means, how can we who died to sin still live in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, in order that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. Now, here's what you need to know about chapter 6 of Romans, on the book of Romans. Chapter 5 gives you context for chapter 6. Chapter 5 talks about the whole fact that as a believer in Christ, I have been justified by faith, My salvation now has been paid for and provided for, and I have a relationship with with God. So when you read chapter 5, like around verse 8, right, it says God loved us so much that he died for us while we were still sinning, okay? It talks about all those things, and if I've accepted Christ in my life as personal Lord and Savior, if I was over here in the world, 
and I have been rescued now, and I have been transferred over into this place where I have a new relationship with God, I need to understand what it means to live in this transferred position and be who God would have us to be. So salvation is by grace through faith. Come on, y'all say, say salvation, salvation is by grace through faith. So here's, here's, here's what this means. I don't work to be saved. I work because I am saved. Okay? So here's what salvation by grace through faith mean, that I can do nothing to save myself. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Come on, y'all know the song. Sin has left a crimson stain, but his blood has done what? Come on, good church people, his blood has done what? Washed it white as snow. So here's what that means. Because I did not work to be saved, and I'm saved by grace, it is not a license now for me to do whatever I want because I am guaranteed entrance into the kingdom of heaven. And I know I just said a mouthful, okay? We'll flesh that out on a Wednesday night. Because I'm going to make it in, it doesn't mean that I can sin here because I know God's going to forgive me. Or I can continue to sin because I know God's going to forgive me. Or I do like, 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 let me just put myself in the equation. I'm going to just go ahead and do this, and then I'll ask for forgiveness afterwards. <laughs> I can look at two or three people I know have done that too, not just me. All right? <laughs> Come on, let's be honest with ourselves, right? I'm going to go ahead and take care of this. Then I'll, you know, but that. So, so I don't have a license. So the text opens up. It says here in Romans uh, 6, shall I continue to sin that grace may abound, is what it says, okay? And it says, by no means, um, he who, we who died to sin, we cannot live in it any longer. Let me do this real quick. Let me define that word sin so you can kind of get a feel. Here's what sin means. It's a want of conformity into the transgression of God's law. So here's what that means. That God says, don't do certain things, and I want to do what God said don't do. Okay, a different definition would be this, complete defiance or disobedience of the law of God. Look at this. Whether I do it inwardly as a habit of the soul, but whether I do it outwardly or whether I do it omissively or commissively, here's what that means, here's what that word means, omission or commission. Whether I go and I do something intentional to pass the Katani or even if I think about doing something to her. You kind of get what I'm saying? Whether it's thought or whether it's deed, through the lens of God, it's still sin. You guys all right? You are kind of quiet this morning. Okay? So the point is, I don't have a right. I don't have a, a way to continue to do this, right? So when you see sin in, in this text, and I want to look at this in the passage, here's what a lot of scholars are saying. They describe sin in this passage as a power which entered the world through Adam and exercises its sway over people. Here's what that means. Here's what it means. It almost seems that sin has so much control that we don't have choices anymore. When Adam sinned, sin entered the world, and death by sin, so death passed upon all because all has sinned. So when we say, shall we sin, we're talking about a power that just kind of seems as if it makes people do stuff. Now let me go here. I'm going to give this away all day long. If I'm over here, you don't have no choice but to sin. This is the world, right? When I'm over here, remember with me, I don't bring that stuff over here with me. Over here, I have a different set of rules, so how I did things there, I should do it different here. So let me paint this picture. So here it is. When I got saved here, God did something to remove the power of sin over my life. All right? You guys all right with me? So we're going to walk through this. I want you all to see this in the text. So, okay? So notice, notice what, what Paul um, says in the text. There's a couple of uh, some grammatical things that I want you all to see. Look at the text, and we'll talk about that. It says here, shall we continue to sin that grace may abound? Come on, say no way. No way. Say it again. Say no way. no way. How can we who died to sin 
still live in it. And notice what it says. Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Look at verse 4. We were buried, therefore, with him in baptism, I'm in the ESV, into his death, in order that, lock, lock into this, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too, and I'm going to talk about that word in a little while, okay? Here's what the passive voice says, and three things here in that verse, three important passives I want you to get. Come on, if you know Christ, say, I have been baptized into Christ's death. Okay, say, say this, I have been buried with Christ through baptism. And say, I have been raised with Christ to a new life. Okay, the importance of the passive voice, here's what it says. You did not kill yourself. You did not bury yourself. And more importantly, you are incapable of raising yourself, yes, yes. right? So this is what the passive voice says. Now what's also nuanced in the verse grammatically is this. If you didn't do it, someone had to do it for you. Yeah, yeah. The beauty of the divine passive says this. Whenever the subject is silent, God is doing all the work. Oh, come on, that, that's a shout right there. God is doing all, so here's what that means. I'm over here. This is the importance theologically of me not doing anything to save myself. I am here, and the moment I say enough is enough, God come into my life, and God saves me, a union take place, an identification take place, where symbolically, listen to this, I identify with the death of Jesus, I identify with the burial of Jesus, and I also identify with the resurrection of Jesus. Here's how Corinthians 5 says it. If any person is in Christ, he is a what? Right. I love that word creation because that's the Greek word tistes, meaning what? He regenes you. He regenerates you. He makes you new all over again such that when he takes you out of this, he brings you over and he's literally bringing a new man. But we're used to being here so long, we can't see the new man. I wish I had somebody in here, right? So, so I've been baptized with him. Here's what the, the beauty and the importance of believers' baptism. I identify with Christ. There's a death that takes place. There's a burial that takes place. And then God raises me up. Lock into this. He raises me up as a new believer in Christ. And you've got to see this literally. He gives us a fresh start. Oh, I need a couple more amen to kind of, he, he literally, he, he, he literally gives us, let me read that text. Look at, look at the verse. Look at it carefully. It says here, we have been baptized into Christ Jesus. We were baptized into his death. Verse 4, we were buried with him, therefore, by baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, now we too, say might, might. say it again, say might, might. walk in what? Newness of life. Now, I got to do some more grammar. That word might is written in the subjunctive. Here's what the subjunctive says. It's the move of probability or possibility, right? I can't help but think of baseball. This is the best illustration I can give you with this. When I go to the mound and I stand there, I have every opportunity to hit that ball, right? The probability exists that when the ball is thrown, I may hit it, right? If I don't hit the ball, it has nothing to do with anybody on the p field and everything to do with me. Amen. You can't get what I'm saying? It has everything to do with me. Nothing to do with anybody else on the field, the field right? Because if I'm good enough, I don't care how the pitcher pitches it. If I'm synced enough, I'll hit that joker. This is why some people have better, what you call it, batting averages. Did I get that right? Okay. You can't, because they can align and they can time things differently. Here's what the subjunctive move says. God kills you. God buries you. And what he kills is the old man. He buries the old man. And he raises you. And he brings you into the kingdom. How you live life in the kingdom, here's the subjunctive, has nothing to do with anybody else. Has everything to do with you. Yes. 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 Let me go this far. 
Here's what everybody else is. Even the enemy, he can throw whatever pitch he has. You are positioned. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so the subjunctive move says this. If it happens, it had nothing to do with how you were before or how long you've been doing it. It has everything to do with how fast you can do what Romans 12, 1 says, renew your mind. And your willingness to renew your mind. Oh, my gosh, we're not going to make far with this. Does this make sense? It has everything to do with how fast I can renew my mind. I love that, okay? You might. Notice what the text might, right? It says might. Here's what that means. Some of y'all going to get it, and some of you won't. Right? And some of y'all going to say, going to come out and say, I've been delivered. Praise the Lord. I've been set free. And you're going to walk in and do this in life. Some of y'all are going to say, you don't know. I'm used to doing this. So I can't trust God quite well yet because I'm used to doing it on my own. And God is saying, I brought you out. Trust me. I've got you. And you say, but God, I don't know if I can trust you yet because I've been doing it so long. So you see the might, right? So you're robbing yourself of your own blessing based on your own excuses. Oh, I wish I had somebody in here, okay? He, 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 here, here's another sweetness. That word so-so. Uh, salvation literally means that when God brings you out, listen to what he does. He delivers you from the grips of sin, and he brings you over. Here's what deliverance means. Anything you had here that wasn't good for him or good for you, when he crossed the line with you, he did not bring that thing with you. If the thing still has you, it, listen to the subjunctive mood, it's because, hang on, God, wait, wait, I got to get this. I need about four of these things. All right, come on, let's go. You brought it with you. Oh, y'all don't like me this morning. And I'm trying to get you today. I wish I had some stuff in my pocket to put it back. Uh, <laughs> I'm, trying, I'm trying to get some people to put it back because you don't need to carry it with you because you've been delivered. Right? Here, passive, he killed you, he buried you, he resurrected you, and he says how you walk this out is dependent on what you do next. Everybody Okay. Come on, say amen if you get this. And let, me, let me hit this one thing because I don't know how far we can get. So union with Christ, watch this. It frees people now from what? Come on, say the slavery of sin. Come on, say it again. Slavery of sin. So notice what it says in verse 2. Watch what, watch what verse 2 says. For if we have been united with him in death, like his... Let me read it again. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. Verse 6. We know that, watch this, the what self? The old self. You guys see it in verse 6? Yes. The old man or the old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to death or to nothing so that we would no longer be, what's that? Slaves, Slaves to sin. For one who has died has been set free from sin. Yes. Now, if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. Yes. We know that Christ being raised from the dead yes. will never do what? Die, die again. And notice what it says. Death no longer, come on, say dominion. dominion. Say it again, say dominion. dominion. Has dominion over him yes. for the death he died yes. He died to sin once for all, but the life he lives, he lives to God. So you must also consider yourself dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. Let me help you. Let me help you. Let me, let me help you with this because this is some good stuff. I'll see if this right here. Okay. So let me explain this. Y'all don't read that yet. Let me explain this. So here, Lazarus, 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 Lazarus in the book of John, I think it's 11, Lazarus died. God raised him from the dead, and he let him live. As time elapsed, Lazarus died again. Okay? He wasn't immortal. Jesus died, and <laughs> you got to get this. Oh, my gosh. He's so much God. Death couldn't keep him in. <laughs> Death had no dominion. So he said, I just came here to show people what's going to happen when I save them. Yeah. So don't think you got you keeping me here. Yeah. I'm here by choice. Yeah. 
and I really only need to stay for three days because the rumor is if I get up before that, folk would talk, I was just asleep. So I got to stay long enough to defy the principles of death. You kind of get what I'm saying? And on that third day morning, when time for me to get up, hey, man, peace out, I got to go, okay? And, and let's, let's, let's let the record reflect. Unlike Lazarus, I'm not coming back. I wish I had somebody. Yeah, yeah. You kind of get what I'm saying, yeah. Unlike Lazarus, I'm not coming back, okay? So lock into this. He robbed the, the, sting, the, the grave of his victory. He took the sting out of death, and he emerged with all power in his hand. So Paul says, if you get that theologically, what happened to Jesus, and now you are in union with him, you must get this theologically, that if God kills you, and God buries you, and God raises you up, what do you think can kill you? Yeah, you get it, you get it, you get it, right? So listen to this. You cannot die again. So here's what that's saying. Shall we continue to sin that grace may about? No. How should we who have died to sin continue any longer in it? So here's the subjunctive moved again. The only reason I do it is not because I have to. It's because I've been doing it for so long, I don't know how to let it go. So every now and then, I fool myself into thinking, I got to slip back, y'all stay clean, okay, and go get me some. Yeah. Uh. All right? Whatever that thing may be that has you. Yeah. Because we think God is not able to provide whatever the voice, the void is, we fool ourselves into thinking, we've got to go do it ourselves. And lock into where you go find it. Not in the kingdom. You got to go back. <laughs> to the place of deliverance. And the argument that the author is making in Romans chapter 6, God delivered you from that thing. You're dead to it. It can't take you on no more. So watch the statement. For the believer in Christ, fallen Christ, sin then becomes an option, not a mandate. Think about it. If I'm dead, it's an option. It's not a mandate. I do it because I want to, not because sin has dominion over me. I think we see that word dominion in the text. Look, 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 look at what it says here about Jesus. It says here in verse, what is it? verse 9, we know that Christ being raised from the dead will never die again because death no longer has, what's that? Dominion. Here's what that word dominion, right? It comes from the root curious, which means that sin is not lording over. Sin is not lording over. Sin is not lording over. Okay? He has a different lord and a different master. So notice the text. Grace does not simply involve forgiveness of sin. It also involves a transfer of lordship. That's dominion, Right? so that believers are no longer under the tyranny of sin. When I'm here, y'all excuse the illustration, okay? Don't charge it against me. And I want to get high. Sin says, you want to get high. And body says, okay. So I go to the man. You, yeah. <laughs> you, yeah, you got, you got, yeah, don't act like you got stuff in there. You better not end up <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, yeah. She's like, you got some stuff to hook, you know what I mean? And, and the only reason I'm here is not because I want to be here. It's because sin told me to come, and I came. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, y'all get this. Yeah. And the only reason I came because sin is my Lord. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. So when I want to get drunk, sin says go to the liquor store. So guess what I do? I go to the liquor store because I obey my Lord. Yes. Oh, come on, y'all. All right? Whenever I want to have illicit sex, hey, man, hook up with all the sisters you can because sin says just go have sex. Okay, and I go do it. Come on, y'all. Come on. Are you with me? Sin says lie, so guess what I do? I just lie. Sin says steal, so guess what I do? I just steal because sin is my Lord. I have no choice. When I've been rescued, ah, ah, when I've been rescued, lordship transfers because this is what Jesus does. He kills the old master. I wish I had somebody here. 
He kills him and he says to you, now you're mine. And so here's what we do. Because we don't believe that God delivers us, we look to see if he's looking. And then we sneak out and go back to the old Lord. Oh, come on, y'all. I'm trying to let you hear me say you don't have to do that. <laughs> you don't have to do that. Does that make sense? Okay, because here's this. Um, sin then becomes an option. It is not a mandate. Here's the last thing I want to share with you real quick. Because freedom from slavery to sin, it provides power to realize God's kingdom. I mean God's kingdom on earth. When I'm free from sin, I'm able to live the way God would want me to live, not the way the enemy wants me to live. Does that make sense? Let me give you one. Let me, let me do this. And then we'll, we'll probably pick this up next week because this is good stuff. I don't want to go too long. Look at verse 12. Do not let sin, therefore, what's that word? Rain. Rain. I'll talk about that in your mortal bodies to make you do what? Y'all see that? Come on, everybody see that? Yes. Don't let sin reign. Here, here's what that word reign. It comes from, from that word. Is it up there? Oh, I'll get the next one. That, that interesting Greek word that means kingdom. Don't let sin, basileo is the word, right, to exercise authority at a royal level, to be king or to rule, to be in control in an absolute manner, to reign or to control completely. Here's what he says. Don't let sin fool you into thinking that it is king of your life. What does that look like, preacher? You know, cravings, desires. All that stuff that come, don't fool yourself into thinking that you have to give in to that craving, that you have to give in to that desire, that you have to give in to that thing that the world does, and don't tell the lie you can't help yourself, okay? Because don't let sin, it says, be in complete control or to be the governing or the ruling authority over your life. I love, I love, I love, um, the, what, what they call it, the Celebrate Recovery, the 12-step stuff. It starts by saying there's a higher power or something like that. What's one of the first rules, is that what it is? Um, that says that, that, that it's not sin, there's God. Yes. Does that make sense? Yes. And so don't let that thing dictate to you what you want to do. So here's my quick runaway to, to Phoenix with my lovely wife. I'm um, be frank and honest with you all. Um, I, was it the day before she called me? And she got on my reserve nerve. She did, yeah. I mean, and so, you know, fellas, you know how it is. I ain't got to listen to this click. Yeah, I, I did. And she's like, no, he didn't. <laughs> oh, she went there. Nick got the, I mean, she did like an exorcist thing. <laughs> you know? <laughs> right? But, but then here's the thing. The Lord checked me real quick. You kind of get what I'm saying? Check me. You ain't going to mess with my manhood. I'm the man around here. I wear the pants. You know, I'm going, I'm being all, you know what I mean? Come on. And then the Lord checked me real quick because I realized my emotions don't drive me. Come on. You kind of get what I'm saying? I think my wife learned the same thing too because when we saw each other that night, I mean, we were so cool, you know, kind of like, yeah, hey, girl, what's up? Look at her. She just smiled me. You know, you know what's up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you're able to repent. You're able to do things differently. Why? Because you're no longer here. You're what? So you don't behave like you do there. So watch the text. Watch the text. Right then I'm going to stop. Watch the text. Come on, Pastor Gay. Watch the text. Notice what it says. Verse 12. Don't let sin reign in your model bodies to obey its passion. You do not present your members to sin as instrument for unrighteousness, okay? Everything in me was saying, oh, you need to straighten that out. You need to call her right now and let her know how she disrespected you. Oh, you need to do all that. And, but here's what I said, oh, sin, you ain't reigning nothing. And you ain't going to take my mouth and get me in deeper trouble. Yeah. <laughs> See what I'm saying? I got to eat and I don't know how to cook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're able to control your members. You see this? To present your members to sin as unrighteousness, as instruments for unrighteousness, 
But know what it says. But present yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life and your members to God as instrument for righteousness. For sin will have no, see that lordship again? Yes. Dominion over you. And watch this. Since you're not under law, but under what? Grace. The only way you can do that, people, I beseech you, brothers, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is a spiritual act of worship, and do not conform any longer to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Right? So I'll pick this up next week, and we'll review this and talk about it some more. This is why Jesus could say in Matthew 5, if somebody smites you, turn the other cheek. Right? He can't say that to worldly people because somebody smack you. Yeah, it's, it's going to be some fighting. It's going to be some suing. It's going to be a whole lot of stuff going on, right? And it's not saying, excuse the term, it's not saying that as kingdom subject we're a bunch of punks or a bunch of weak people. It's not saying that. It's just saying there's a different way you live life so that sin is not the dominating or ruling factor. Does that make sense? So living in the kingdom is a little different. And the reason the world won't come to the kingdom of God is because they're sitting over here and they're looking over here and they ain't seeing no difference. And they say, why do you think I want to give this up to go fake the funk over there? I can just do it right here. Right? And so God is not pleased, not so much with the world, his church for not realizing the kingdom is now. The kingdom is present. The kingdom is here. But we need to hear the truth that sin shouldn't reign in us. Now, that doesn't mean that we will not sin. It doesn't mean that. It doesn't mean that we're going to be perfect. I mean, First John says when we sin, confess, he's faithful and just to forgive and all that stuff. But it says we're honest with ourselves. We're real with ourselves. And we make the adjustments to be who God would have us to be. My prayer for this church and this community is that we all learn what that means. So when the enemy comes like he came to Eve, did God really say, we can catch the thought and take it, submit it to the things of God and not give in, right? But it calls for a different level of commitment. So I want to challenge you this morning. Just bow your heads with me. Wherever you are, wherever you are, wherever you are, take the time to seek God and to allow God just to move and to speak in your life and to have his ways.